I got a great idea. Let's go to Aruba for two weeks. You're paying, of course. What What do you think? Why not? I thought you loved me. I thought you. I thought I was your favorite girlfriend. What do you What do you mean? No Aruba. I had this great idea though. And she'll look at you, and you'll just you'll look at her at that moment and be like, "This. She really. I don't think she understands what was happening." It's crazy, guys. It's crazy. Talking about being happy and how being happy can sometimes cause us to self-sabotage. Or Yes, you girls, you women, sometimes being happy, truly happy, will cause a woman to self-sabotage. Or being happy can be so uncomfortable that we... Yeah, I always hate when I'm happy. I'm like, this blows boring like avoided at all costs and i just wanted to have a conversation with you about it and also get your take so feel well that would require me to actually be able to talk to you but since this is video you can't get my take which makes that one of the dumbest things i've ever heard another human being utter on video but you're kind of cute so we'll look over it conversation with you about it and also get your take so feel free to leave any thoughts that you have in the comments down below Oh, right. The comments that you can't respond directly to making this whole conversation a moot point. I get oh, it. Because this is something that's so incredibly common, yet I don't know why I haven't talked about it. I've been on YouTube for 10 years, you guys. Thousands of videos. Never talked about it. But the reason being, so here's the premise. Okay, so we can feel really happy in our life. Why are you wearing a sweatsuit? You look like you're wearing like gym sweats and gym sweatpants. Like what's, what's going on here? I mean, I get it. You are getting older, which no offense. I don't mean any offense, but why the gym sweatsuit? I'm curious. You look like you're in a nice place. It looks like a nice library type thing. I see lots of wood inlay. So it's obviously an upscale joint. Why the sweatpants? And something could be going really good, right? Let's say we've start, started therapy finally, and we're, we got out of that toxic friendship or Oh, you're crazy. Never mind. I understand the sweatpants now. Relationship. And maybe we finally got that job we've been trying so hard to get. And then we feel like maybe imposter syndrome creeps in, or we find ourselves seeking out maybe that unhealthy, toxic relationship again. Or I don't know. We can do a lot of different things to maybe create an unhappy scenario again. Crazy. And we can wonder why in the hell do I keep doing this? And the truth is that we always assume that being happy is something that everybody strives for. And no, it's just y'all nuts. It's literally just y'all who constantly chases other human beings. Then typically reach a point where like, this is enough. This is good. Things are good enough. This is enough. Not women, gotta get bigger, gotta get better. The neighbors got this. Did you see Sally's new car? Did you see Jeff's new? We gotta do this. Well, they got a boat, why can't we have a boat? I wanna have a place in the Keys. They have a place in the Keys. Men reach a point where they're like, this is enough. Women do not. I gotta have the next thing, the next best love, the next best thing. He can spend more money on me. This guy's got more money than that guy. And this guy never really loved me. And I never really loved this guy, but he's got a lot of... Learn to let it be enough, women, because your endless search for happiness is why you can't find it. You're the dog chasing your tail. If you would slow down enough, you would realize the thing you're chasing is right there attached to you. But you just will not slow down enough to see it. Oh, it's over here. It's over there. It's over there. I got to go over here. This It's this guy. It's this guy. It's this guy. Well, this guy's not tall enough. This guy's too short. This guy's too not short enough. This guy's... It's right there with you the whole time, women. But you won't damn stop looking for it long enough to realize that it's right with you gotta be over here is it under this rock where's it at it's in this new sconce it's in this wallpaper it's in this car it's in this interior color it's in this sweater it's in this bag it's in this purse it's in this makeup stop women stop it's you 
You're the problem. Wants and that it's this amazing feeling that all of us are like, yay, right? But for many, we maybe never felt happy before. And so that feeling of things going our way is uncomfortable because it's completely foreign. Man, fuck your happiness. How about that? How about if you are the type of person to sabotage all kinds of shit because you're like, oh, I don't know how to feel happy and this is weird. And man, fuck your happiness. How about that? If you don't appreciate it, why should I appreciate it? If you don't respect it, why should I respect it? If you don't care about it, if you don't value it, if you don't, why should I slow down and look in that direction? If you're like, well, I, I don't know how to be happy. And sometimes I sabotage relationships and you're an asshole. How about that? Right. I think we forget that some, some of us didn't have like healthy. Oh, here comes a poor pitiful me. Some of us didn't have happy this. childhoods and maybe. Oh, my childhood was unhappy. I have the right to be a shithead to everyone else. Y'all ever heard that one before? Oh, well, things went north on a Sunday 20 years ago, so I'm an asshole. Y'all ever hear that one? That's my favorite excuse. It's always just been a struggle. Uh oh, this is hard. Shit is difficult, and I'm not used to that. And so when things are going well, we're like, wait, what? Like, it just doesn't feel right, right? <laughs> They ain't never had to actually struggle a damn day in your life. The fact that you even had time to stop and think about that tells me you have never had to struggle for anything ever, ever. It's like I've talked about, the, talked about this before when it comes to relationships, how if we're wanting to change patterns, like let's say we keep dating the same type of person and we don't want to do that anymore because it never turns out well for us or maybe it's abusive. Then we date someone who's like, healthy, happy, friendly, not abusive to us. And we're like, I don't know. They just don't. They just don't choke me out, punch me and give me, he promised a right cross and he gave an uppercut. I mean, this, the whole thing is bullshit. They just don't give me the same excitement. I'm just not that interested in them, you know, because that kind of relationship is uncomfortable. And even my own therapist was telling me back in the day, but right before I met Sean, she was like, I don't want you to like, Sean is fucked guys. Jump into a relationship. I kind of want you to to slowly take your time and be uncomfortable in your next relationship. Because I was trying. <laughs> I'm not even gonna, all right. I'm really just gonna. Trying to break a pattern. And so f I say all that to say that sometimes being happy is us trying to break that pattern and it's really uncomfortable. And Are you trying to convince us this whole time? Or, I mean, no offense, but if you, you're on YouTube, you're making this video, you're saying all this stuff. Are you trying to convince us, the viewer, that what you're saying about happiness and how to get there is the right way to go with your listing of therapists and all this, with everything you've said, I just realized you're informing us about how happiness, that's fucked up, guys. Think about that. Why don't you matrix that one for a few moments and see if you don't have like an inception moment. This lady with the therapist and the this and the that and the, she's telling us about happiness and how to understand it. It can be hard for us to sit in it, meaning uh -huh. allow it to happen without taking action that puts us back into a place where we feel bad again, because feeling bad is comfortable, right? We're wow, man, honestly, wow. Used to it and we kind of know what to expect. So we can find ourselves like trying to do that, hence the self-sabotage. Another component that I want to talk about and something that we've talked about in relation to trauma, but I think it applies here as well, is how happiness can feel, can cause us to feel vulnerable and make us feel like we're unsafe. Vulnerable, surrounded by people who trust and love you and dote money and gifts and kindness on you. I, I don't feel totally safe. I feel vulnerable all of a sudden. And the reason I say we talked about in relation to trauma is we talk about how those of us who've been traumatized and have PTSD or comp. 
Oh my God, with the victimization and the, listen, I've got this acronym and this. If you weren't in a war and no one having people explode next to you and bombs going off, and you may not have PTSD, guys. If you weren't a police officer that's been in Watts and South Central while the gang riots are going on and the bullets are flying, and the, you may not have PTSD. If you just had a bad Tuesday twice in February last year, it may not be PTSD. I don't know. I'm no doctor. I can't even believe I have to fucking say this to pacify YouTube, but I make no claim of medical expertise, guys. I'm no doctor. I don't know what I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm just, maybe you do have it. Maybe you do have PTSD and you need all the drugs. I don't know. Plex PTSD can struggle to find a safe place to go. The fact that she even did the air quotes for safe space is the most ironic thing I've seen recently. I don't know if you picked up on that. I'll try to back it up a little bit, but just the... While listening to the inane bullshittery of her excuse, quite frankly, notice if you pick up on the air quotes during safe space. Complex PTSD can struggle to find a safe place. If you know what air quotes imply and you, I mean... You, you can't make that up, guys. You literally can't. That's... ...to go to. You know how some therapists might say, like, find a safe place you can go to in your mind so you can work through this. Well, safe can feel just as scary as unsafe. You know what, then? There's no solution other than your complaints. If safe can be just as scary as unsafe, and then maybe you're just an asshole. Maybe you're just an attention-starved asshole who needs your therapist's attention because mommy and daddy didn't hug you or love you enough. Have you ever considered that? Where you're like, well, I need him to love me like this, and if he knew how to love me the right way, and then he'd be the man for me. And if, Well, if this man would love me like this, and then if I, I need a safe space, and my therapist said be, try a safe space, and I thought maybe a safe space wouldn't. Sometimes safe spaces are really scary too. Maybe you just grow up a little bit. And act like an adult. Maybe. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's safe. It goddamn doesn't make sense. How about them apples? Safe can feel unsafe because if we feel safe, that means our guard is down and we're relaxed. And that can make us more vulnerable to being harmed again. Wow, guys. I mean, I mean, can you even... Wow, guys. Yeah, good point, Rusty Rivers. Safe space is divorce court's jurisdiction. Yeah. Boy, they're safe there. Nothing bad's going to happen there, guys. Even if she's murdering someone on closed circuit television, holding up today's newspaper with a selfie of her being taken at the time of the murder. She's safe. Nothing to worry about. It's all good. Man, ain't no thing. She probably didn't even do it. She probably didn't even shank them people. It's crazy, guys. It's crazy. Let's listen to more of this lady. I understand the sweatpants now. I'm wondering why she doesn't have that white jacket with all the straps on it. Never mind. And I think this applies when it comes to being happy and being afraid of being happy. It's that same kind of thing. We can feel like we're going to let our guard down, and that can make us more vulnerable to some unhappiness or some horrific thing occurring to us. So why not just burn this whole motherfucker to the ground? Is that what you think, women? Is that why y'all are like, you know what? I've been in this relationship 22 years. He's a good man. We have four kids together. We have all of our finances are tied and intertwined together. This feels a little safe. I'm going to burn the house down. Is this what you think, women? Is this the thought process? You're like, you know what? Look, everything's gone really well for a long time. and We've lived great together. We've been great together. He's a super nice guy. I'm going to stab his family. Why do you do this? This feels safe. And I feel like it's is a little too safe. I better cause some confusion and anxiety amongst everyone who knows us and has ever cared about us as a family. 
What do you say, guys? Here we go. Women, why do you do this? Why do you do this? I'm going to throw chaos in the middle of everything. I'll wait till Christmas morning to do it. What do you say? I'll we'll file for the divorce on Thanksgiving Day. I'll have him served at his grandmother's funeral. This will be fun. It's going to cause us to be unhappy again. Does that make sense? And so in a way, it's almost like we're hyper vigilant, like we're or hyper vigilant, like we're fighting against the happiness. Be yes. Say that again into the mirror, women. It's almost almost like you're fighting against the happiness. It sounds crazy when you say it out loud, doesn't it? Because that feels kind of scary in and of itself. Oh my God, everything is scary. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, this is scary and that's scary and this seems scary. This could be scary if things were just right and the universe was aligned right, then this would be really scary. And oh my gosh, this is scary. And Wisdom Vision Productions. What a bundle of joy. Can you imagine, guys? I mean, outwardly, when you look at her, I mean, clearly she looks like she's aging a little. Sorry, ma'am, I can see it. I don't know what to tell you. You look at her and you're thinking, man, she'd be fun in this act. This girl looks like she'd be fun. She looks like she's kind of cute. She does her makeup a little bit. I see eyebrows are plucked a little. I mean, you know, I'm just, you, know, you hear me. I mean, she is wearing a lunatic's outfit that they wear before they go out to get the newspaper in the morning. But, you know, I can work with this. And then you start hearing her talk, and I'm scared. And this isn't safe. And are we safe? Are we even safe? And you're like, this bitch is crazy. And I mean, you probably still do it. Probably still do it, though. Also kind of tying into that or rolling off of that is the fact that when we can finally feel kind of happy, I've heard this from a lot of patients and a lot of you out there. Anyone that hears things from a lot of patients, guys, Probably just avoid conversations with them altogether. They probably heard a lot of stuff. Is that we can feel like we're waiting for the next shoe to drop, right? Like, okay, everything's kind of going well. When are things not going to go well? Because they always have in the past. And I think that... This is the problem with women, guys. They, they expect this. They, they're in this constant state of like, when things going to go bad? Well, here's what men do, girls. We know things are going to go bad eventually. Life is uncertain. It's a big fun ride. We until the end when it ends badly and sometimes painfully, maybe unannounced, maybe unplanned for, maybe who knows. We all go through this world together without living in this crippling fear of anxiety. And this is, this is safe. And am I safe? And is this scary? And is... You have to learn to live a little bit, ladies. But when you live in this constant state of, well, what's going on? What am I happening? What is, I don't know what's going on. You, this, is, you, you, this ends badly for you because you can't find happiness searching for something that doesn't exist. It's temporary. Happiness is a cookie, an orgasm. You know, it's like five or six different things and it's temporary. And then it wears off and you're like, well, this is getting old or I got to go to work or you get it. That, that's what makes us great as humans, right? We're super adaptable and we can sniff out patterns and figure out what, like, we try to put everything into kind of a category or a pattern so that we're prepared for the future. Does that make sense? That's like what our brain is always doing. It's constantly looking in our environment, seeking out threat uh, to our emotional or physical safety. That's the problem with you women. You can't, it's not fun to be around you because you're always looking for ways to, to fun vacuum the room out. Oh, suck a little fun over here. Suck a little, hey, put on your helmet, do this. You can get, oh, don't drive too fast. Don't. You're not fun. You always try to human resources the entire room and mother over the whole room and lord over everything. And, oh, don't do this. Don't do that. Oh, my, that looks dangerous over there. And you, you're not fun. You forget how to be fun. Oh, I would never do that at the park with you, young man. You, that's, are you crazy that someone can catch us? And that's the fun part. You're not fun. Guys, girls, sorry. And so in doing so, when we finally feel happy, our brain is like looking around. It's like, uh-uh-uh, last time we felt like this, remember, then our parents got divorced, our grandma died, and then, you know, our dad. Oh, damn, here we go. She got issues.
Here we go. Let's get back. She got issues. Of course, our grandma died, and then, you know, our dad started drinking. I don't know. All right, her parents got a divorced, right? That sounds like the first thing she said. Dad drinking was after that. Of course, we'll give dad a little props on that one because she probably got divorced great to hell. His kids got taken away, but that was the first, that was number one for her. Now, if any of you have been watching this girl like I have this entire time, you know, you've understood one thing. Her dad was not in her life. Her dad was not in her life. She's been in this scared place her entire life looking for the safety and security provided by a father who is there with his daughter. If he's allowed to be, if the mother hasn't re removed him, this girl spent her lifetime looking for her father who probably loved her very much. Yeah. That's what she held on to. That's what she's been searching for this whole time that she can't allow herself to be comfortable or, because her father was taken from her life. And that was up until that point in her life was always her point of safety. Y'all can say I'm crazy if you want. All this shit she just said boiled down to she doesn't feel safe. Because one day when she was safe and her world was perfect, her daddy was right by her side. And one day her mommy said, fuck this, I ain't happy. Her daddy was never by her side anymore and she didn't feel safe anymore. And God forbid something happened to this girl one day when daddy wasn't there and he had been removed from the family. And she held on to that for the rest of her life. My daddy wasn't there one time. I wasn't safe because my daddy wasn't there anymore. That was the first thing she fucking said, guys. Tell me I'm crazy. Anyways, you can't tell me that. I'm just making up a scenario. Right. Yeah, you're just making up a scenario. I, mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Come on, guys. I'm Johnny. Can't tell me. And so our brain looks out and it's like, oh, no, no. We know this. This is actually a threat to our emotional well-being. Therefore, you know, it can put us into our stress response, cause fight, flight, freeze, fawn to happen. And damn, she knows all the terminology. This girl's been in therapy her whole life. Oh, and or we can start to do things to cause us to not be in that scenario because we want to remove ourselves from that threat to lower that stress response and feel better. Even if that feeling better actually means we're less happy. Right. You heard her say it. What's the title of this video? You can't make her happy, but you can make yourself happy. Think how much time you've spent trying to make women happy, guys. And I'm not saying that negatively about women, girls. Not. I'm just, think how much effort you've put into trying to please any woman or all of them collectively. What an amazing amount of energy we've wasted, boys. Does any of this make sense? I hope so. Because I've been thinking about it a lot and I think it's it's way, way, way more common than we let on. And I think all of us have different limits to what we'll allow ourselves to experience or allow ourselves to take in. I even personally struggle to, I don't know if the word's like acknowledge, but maybe it's more absorb like things that I've accomplished. And I know this sounds really silly to say it this way and to even talk about it in relation to this, but it's like, I work really hard to write my two books and every time I do my mom and you know my friends and family will be like oh my god that's amazing even Sean is like I can't you know this is amazing that you wrote like for my birthday this year he's like I really want to treat you you had like a big year you wrote a book so she said her mom and Sean and I really want to treat you and all I've heard so far guys if you're watching the matrix of this young woman is her validation comes from others book and blah 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 and people are all excited and I have a People were all excited. Her validation comes from her mom and Sean. Her dad wasn't there. This is what I've heard. Tough time allowing that to get in. I'm like, oh, no, no. If I start thinking of myself in that way, then I'm only going to let myself down or let the people in my life down. Let them down. Her validation comes from the approval of other people. Her mom probably used this as a tool over her as a child. It's vindictive, I understand. Cold-blooded. I'm not an expert, though. Don't take my word for it. I'm just telling you I've. this is something I've seen before. And that 
that is what we're talking about is it, I do it too. It's like the struggle to, to admit that we're happy. She's petrified to let her mother down probably because when her father let her mother down, her words, not mine, her parents got a divorce. Her dad started drinking. She saw her mother abandon her father, take her father out of her life. And now she feels that her entire worth is wrapped up in what her mother thinks and whoever Sean is. Did y'all catch it? Did you see it happen? And admit that we're proud and like good, like because we don't want to, we're looking in the future thinking, oh, but I don't want to fuck this up, right? I don't want to fuck up. I don't want to let mom down. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to fuck up. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to let anyone down. I don't want to let these people down. My whole sense of self-worth depends on what these people think about me. What if I mess this up? Right, and it's like, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> That's not her mother has failed her not healthy and I'm still working on how to not do it. But I will tell you this. Sometimes what I do is I just allow people to give me compliments or allow those stories to be told to me. And I just don't fight back. And I know that that sounds silly. Like, why would you fight back? But I don't know. I don't know. I just do it. But when it comes because you were taught that you were not worthy. That's why you were taught that you were not worthy and you must strive for worthiness. You were taught to constantly seek the approval and validation of your mother or whoever else was in your life at that time, which you have now attached to Sean, the new guy, the new lucky man in your life is what it sounded like. You've, attached that validation seeking to the next person and the next person and the next person. But mommy's still in the picture. It's still mommy. Mother, dear. Mother, do you approve of me yet? Why no, Carol, you're a whore. It's mother, dear. It's approval from someone else. It's validation. Never can be happy, guys because they seek it constantly. They will continue to seek it until they die. Even if it is already in their pocket, they will dig deeper into their pants to get to it. And this is their great tragedy. This is not a bad thing. I'm not dissing women. This is the tragedy of women. They will continue to seek until there is nothing left to be found. And then they will realize that everything they've looked for was inconsequential to what they actually had when they were looking. Everything they were looking for was inconsequential in comparison to what they had when they were doing the searching for what they were looking for, which held no importance. This is the great curse of women. Guys, thanks for coming to the live stream tonight. It's been a blasty blast, guys. I've had a really good time. Thanks for coming. I'm John. It's always nice, guys. I don't see I've missed any super chats or anything like that. I don't see any. I better look. I don't see any cash apps on there for you guys to read any comments. So thank you, guys. I absolutely love seeing you guys. You don't know what it's got till it's gone with John. 